Hello, my name's Audrey Scanlon. I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Pennsylvania. It's great to be with you today, the 26th of February in the year 2021. I'd like to speak with you today about the COVID-19 vaccine. And right up front, I'd like to make a disclaimer that I am not a doctor or a nurse or a health professional of any kind. I am a Bishop of the Episcopal Church and it is from that seat in which I would like to offer counsel to you and uh, conversation on this topic. I'd like to uh, say three things, really. The first is to um, talk about where we are right now. The second is to let you know about some resources and opportunities for us around the vaccine. And then thirdly, I'd like to offer you some, um, do a little Bible dipping, if you will, talking about places in Holy Scripture that uh, we're called to study as Christians who are in the middle of considering whether or not this is an appropriate um, action for us to take part in vaccination against the COVID-19 virus. And so firstly, I'd like to rejoice with those of you who have been able to receive the vaccine in Pennsylvania, of course, we have a, a tiered system and those at the front of the line for us are people for whom um, their health risks are evident, um, either by a pre-existing condition or because of their age. And so um, I understand that, that those people have been working to receive the vaccine uh, the people in the next tier down are uh, the 1B tier, and that would be the tier that includes clergy as well as other essential workers in our congregations. And so as we come closer to uh, the 1B tier, I would invite you, especially if you're clergy in our diocese, to consider if you're working in a congregation, who it is among you in your congregation that are essential workers for whom you really need to uh, engage to, in employment to uh, produce the services that we're currently producing. And so again, I rejoice with those of you who have been able to receive the vaccine, who have had not just the first dose, but the second dose as well. And I'd also like to acknowledge the great frustration uh, that is um, very evident actually in Pennsylvania, especially it seems in central Pennsylvania, where the vaccine is in some cases hard to find. Now I'm not eligible yet for the vaccine being in the tier of 1B, but I do, I've been practicing by getting online in the morning and looking at the different sites around me and seeing where I may be able to go when it is my turn. And I understand just from that little practice exercise of mine how frustrating it can be. And so I want to acknowledge that and I want to um, be happy for those of you who have gotten it and also say to those of you who haven't yet but want it to uh, hold fast and be persistent and um, we will get it when, when we can. Secondly, I'd like to offer some resources to you. The Episcopal um, Office of Government Relations came out last week with what they're calling a COVID-19 toolkit. And this is a variety of resources which you can access online that will give um, suggestions for how your congregation may be able to assist in getting people, not just within your own congregation, but others vaccinated. Your congregation may be able to serve as a site for vaccination. It also gives resources for um, fact sheets about the vaccination. Is it safe? Um, should we take it? Um, all of those sorts of things. So I would encourage you to go on the website for uh, the Episcopal Office of Government Relations and look for their COVID-19 toolkit. Also, in our diocese, we've had an opportunity through our emergency and disaster coordinator, Mr. Ed Robertson. Uh, for those of you who would be interested in serving in the civic capacity as volunteers as the vaccine rollout continues, 
And so if you would like to serve both in a medical or a non-medical capacity, as somebody who would check people in, or if you're authorized to do so, to administer the vaccine, please be in touch with Ed Robertson or through my office, and we'll get you in touch with Ed so that you can participate in that way, which would be a, a wonderful act of ministry and service. Thirdly, I'd like to just talk a little bit um, about the scriptural foundations of vaccination. Now, as far as I know, uh, there's no vaccination mentioned in the pages of Holy Scripture, but there are lots of um, places in Scripture, both in the Old Testament, uh, in the Book of Law of Deuteronomy, there are places in the prophetic scriptures, and of course there's places in in the New Testament to talk about um, how it is that we function in community, what our obligation is to each other. So I'd like to just run through those a little bit, if you would allow me. And of course, the great commandment, which we, which we read about in the New Testament, I'll read to you from uh, the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love your neighbor as yourself. In a short public service announcement that our presiding Bishop, uh, Bishop Curry put together this week, he too cites that great commandment to love your neighbor as yourself, as he talks about the importance of the COVID-19 vaccine. But I'd also like to go back and read to you a little bit from the book of Deuteronomy, which of course is the law as the, um, as the Hebrew people received it. And as those in, in the time before the new covenant, the, before the new covenant with Jesus, the Mosaic covenant, the, the covenant that was made between God and God's people um, as they went through the wilderness and later as they established um, their sense of tribal community. These are some of the laws that they followed. So let me read to you from Deuteronomy uh, in the 14th chapter. The Levite, because he has no portion or inheritance among you, and the alien, the orphan, and the widow who are in your town shall come and eat and be satisfied in order that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hand which you do. And so God is directing God's people to share what they have, to share, to feed the orphans and the widows among them. And the Levites, who among the tribal community were the priests. Later on in Deuteronomy, it says, When you reap your harvest in your field and have forgotten a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the alien, for the orphan, for the widow, in order that the Lord your God may bless you in the work of your hands. When you beat your olive tree, you should not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the alien, for the orphan, and for the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not go over it again, for it shall be for the alien, for the orphan, and for the widow. This, of course, is the ancient um, practice of gleaning, which we, which we learn about here in Deuteronomy, the practice of leaving the edges of your field unharvested so that those in need can come and be cared for. So there's this sense of communal responsibility that's already building in, in uh, the very earliest law that we have in Holy Scripture. Of course, our prophets take that law and uh, they mostly admonish the people for not following it, but not necessarily for not following every jot and tittle of the law as much as they're encouraging this um, covenantal responsibility and this communal responsibility. And so, you know, Hosea and Malachi and Amos and Jeremiah, all of the prophets have something to say about taking care of each other. Uh, in Isaiah, in the very first chapter of Isaiah, the 17th verse, he writes, learn to do good, 
seek justice, reprove the ruthless, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. So this is God's call to people to care for the less fortunate. And so not all among us, of course, are the less fortunate who are hoping to receive the vaccine, but there is again this building sense of identity of being in community in Christ, uh, which calls us to care for our neighbor, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And of course, getting the vaccine, if that is, isn't direct enough, um, is not just about protecting ourselves from the COVID virus, although that's certainly um, one motivating factor, but it's about caring for those around us so they don't get it either. Finally, uh, just to make sure that we go through the, the whole uh, gamut of scripture here, way towards the back of Holy Scripture, in the first letter of John, he writes, but if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. So these are just a few ideas from what I would call a social justice perspective of um, building that sense of um, responsibility towards each other, which is really a Christian value. Earlier this week, I was meeting with some of our students from the St. Stephen's Episcopal Cathedral, the Cathedral School. We we're making a little video for their alumni night uh, to take place this week. And I was remembering with them the motto, one of the mottos of their school, which is, I can, you can, together we can. I can, you can, together we can. I think that motto applies not just to St. Stephen's Episcopal School, but it also applies to us as we are faced with this challenge right now of um, deciding whether to receive the vaccine, seeking it out, uh, if we do want it, if it is advised for us by our um, medical professionals, and then taking advantage of it for the sake of ourselves, for the sake of our neighbor. And so my friends, I'd like to close as we always do with a prayer. This is one of our prayers from the Book of Common Prayer, this is a prayer for guidance. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doing, that with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so friends, until next time, may God bless you, guide you, and keep you always.